Можно сейчас? Тимати, слышите ли вы нас? Да-да, э, да, все Можно слышно. Начать, Спасибо но... большое. Можно... Тимати. Да, 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 здрасте, все, здрасте. Все хорошо, Вы меня да? Слышите? Да, вас замечательно слышно. Да, да. Все хорошо. Да, все, все спасибо. отлично. Спасибо. Да, все отлично. Большое спасибо. Да, вам спасибо. Да. Коллеги, я предлагаю начать нашу панельную сессию. Dear colleagues, let us start our panel discussion. Good morning. Internationalization of the university environment. I'm uh, Marina Guzikova, Deputy Director, Department of Project Management and Research Internationalization, Ural Federal University. Uh, we have one speaker in the remote interactive mode, uh, Timothy Edward O'Connor, uh, Yulia Grinkevich, Director for Internationalization, High School of Economics, uh, Moscow. Give work. Avitikian, Dmitry Vasilenko, St. Petersburg uh, State Economic University. We are going to speak about inter internationalization of the environment. Uh, this topic is uh, closely connected with the third mission of the university. And I would like our speakers to explain how uh, they see their connection with the, uh, this uh, third mission, the ways of the development of the university. I offer to speak today about, uh, you know, that uh, we have got developed international communication, uh, our mature international projects, uh, uh, we would like to understand the best practices, the answers to all interesting questions, uh, some uh, issues that we have to discuss in the near future, and I hope that our discussion will be fruitful and useful for all the participants what we have to do in the near future. In our situation, we have to raise questions. It is more important than to answer them. I offer, I would like to give the floor to Timothy O'Connor, our online participant. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. We hear you. We can hear and see you. And dear colleagues, good morning. I would like to share my experience and ideas about uh, international university in uh, terms of sustainable uh, future and uh, human progress. It is closely connected with the third mission of the university. And I'm sure that uh, uh, high institutions are responsible for uh, natural resources, uh, their consumption, uh, and human progress is measured by uh, uh, technological achievements. It's very important, and we have to, to be concerned by cultural and enlightenment and uh, spiritual progress on, of world community. In this con context, I would like to highlight that international integration and the contribution into international educational community is one of the main principles of creation and development of international university of world level. 
and five uh, operational values are very important today. I would like to, dear colleagues, I would like to share this slide. You can see these operational values in this slide. Uh, the first is uh, the development of institutions, not only for the growth, but also for uh, external uh, borrow. Uh, the next, uh, universal competences, sustainable uh, and long-term education, uh, this thought. Alumni are not only national and global leaders, they change uh, the world for the be uh, better. Uh, then generation uh, and innovation of entrepreneurial uh, projects. And number five, uh, the university not only educates, uh, answers uh, global challenges, but it also forms uh, international agenda in all uh, directions of human activity, uh, activity. and uh, my uh, university demonstrates the following cases. Our best uh, practices in terms of international uh, development is uh, the forming of international uh, scientific uh, council. We have conducted 14 meetings since uh, 2014 till uh, 2020. And uh, world practices gave us uh, valuable recommendations. Uh, and uh, in summer 2020, we conducted online a meeting and uh, the importance of international cooperation was marked. And uh, one uh, one of the partners, our partners, is the uh, publishing house of uh, uh, Cambridge University, and uh, bachelor bachelor programs are of high importance. We were the f uh, we were the first who offered mixed education and digital resources in the education. Without this experience, it uh, uh, would be impossible to achieve success. Um, we shifted to online format last year. And uh, thanks to uh, previous experience, it uh, was easier. In order to confirm our um, uh, 10 year cooperation, is uh, the uh, 24th 6th uh, conference digital change in the LT community it was organized in the cooperation with the Department of Foreign uh, Languages um, it will be conducted in online format uh, the third, uh, third 5th June 2021 the publishing house of uh, Cambridge University offered to conduct this uh, conference uh, and leading linguist and key speaker keynote speaker uh, will have the floor since 2020 uh, the school of pedagogical mastership has been functioning and dear colleagues, I have been working uh, at my university for 12 years, and a lot has been done. Our School of Pedagogical Mastership uh, cooperates with uh, this uh, University College uh, London Arena Center. and. Uh, we launched the uh, program of uh, professional retraining for teachers and managers of uh, educational programs at uh, my university. One of the uh, key projects has become the mutual uh, project with the British Embassy. 
in this sphere of education and science, 2020-2021, they are the best uh, in Russia, they are the best projects in Russia and uh, Britain in terms of uh, future prospects of cooperation in this sphere of education and uh, the uh, scientists of new generation have the opportunity to uh, receive uh, new education and development. Uh, three online forums uh, were conduct conducted and speakers from leading Russian and British universities took part in them. One of these uh, forums offered the discussion of uh, the programs of transnational education, uh, Russian and British uh, higher institution, institutions uh, took part in uh, these uh, forums and offered their programs of dual diplomas. It is very important to develop and launch and uh, preserve such programs of dual diplomas. In 2012, on the basis of uh, the university international uh, workshop was uh, uh, conducted, uh, it was uh, devoted to uh, plastic recycling and uh, the labo laboratory of personal production uh, was launched. Uh, 21 students from France, uh, the USA and Russia took part in this uh, projects, project. It is a very interesting and useful uh, project. Uh, it uh, offers uh, a professional oriented uh, approach. Uh, it uh, provide, provided not only uh, and a short term program was offered and uh, it is very important in uh, development of international relations. And uh, my university is aimed at uh, the attraction of leading uh, scholars from the whole world through the, uh, through, uh, through the system of open competition. Within the frames of these grants, a lot of uh, leading scholars were attracted with the uh, high Hirsch index. And uh, uh, our university is uh, playing a key role, and there is a selection of uh, specialists. It is very interesting. From the very beginning, we thought that uh, they were going to select professionals, but uh, the situation was different. They selected young specialists. Uh, from 2017 till 2020, my university participated in uh, writing of uh, nearly 5,000 publications. Uh, this slide shows our partners uh, with whom we cooperate and publish articles. The first place takes uh, National C uh, Research Center of France, then National Polytechnical School, uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. Uh, the third place uh, takes uh, Polish Academy of Sciences, then University of uh, Paris, then University of Cambridge from uh, United Ki uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, and how uh, can uh, this publication be related to, to the third mission of the university? In fact, uh, the literature is very significant and it proves that the process is long term and um, uh, not more than 10 years have uh, have to pass. At our university, there is a tradition to write and publish uh, brilliant articles in uh, journals with a high impact factor. 
and there is uh, uh, and uh, time uh, will pass up to 10 years in order to understand uh, the and see and feel the results of these uh, publications. And uh, they give money, but they ask where is the result. The result will be, but you just have to wait and uh, to collect uh, this uh, mass, uh, not only publications, but also uh, the influence uh, on society. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm eager to answer your questions. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you from moderator that you kept uh, the timeline. Thank you very much. I think that Timothy is uh, just a bright example of what is internationalization. Uh, his bright Russian language uh, is uh, brilliant. Uh, I was always envying that. So if you have any questions, please ask if you wish to ask. Magdalena, please. Good morning, Timothy. And I welcome everyone that are here. I'm very happy that we are talking about this. We are talking about this topic. Timothy, I'd like to ask you, in Mises, in your university, I remember several years ago, uh, they started a program to teach not only students, but all university community, English language. And you also support researchers and teachers in this connection so that they can write better in English and publish. I remember three years ago, there was a conference about education. You've told about that. I wanted to ask you, when you decided to do so. What uh, what results do you see now? Thank you very much for an interesting question. Yeah, you are right. When I announced the collaboration with the publish publishing our main program uh, to teach English uh, in bachelor degree, but we also give opportunities for masters and uh, postgraduate students. And not only teachers and researchers, but also other employees. They can learn English. Maybe they don't have such a workload as students, bachelor students have. Moreover, I addressed this slide because I, as I told our office of the academic writing, maybe this is not really a correct title of the office. Maybe this is more like modern communications. And at the same time, all these publications almost without exclusions. The colleagues that work in this office, they contributed a lot. We see the results. Our researchers, not only young researchers, at the beginning we had uh, young participants, but later uh, senior researchers and uh, scholars realized that it will bring them good results. And they participated in our program, not only uh, writing, but also oral speech, also speaking. And they increased their level of English uh, due to our programs of teaching English language. And the student office really uh, contributed to these results. I think it will be impossible to get these results without the office and the school of this mastership. 
Thank you very much. Timothy, I hope you'll stay with us till the end of the discussion. Yes, yes, sure. It's very interesting. Absolutely. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to come. It would be really great. But I had a lot of meetings. I have a lot of meetings. Uh, had a lot of meetings this week, so uh, I'm happy to participate online. And uh, the discussion is very interesting. So I'll stay till till the end. So we will move further through our agenda. The floor is uh, uh, has Yulia Grinkevich, director for internationalization of uh, HSE. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'll try to manage uh, moving the slides. Thank you very much to the first speaker. Thanks to Professor O'Connor. I have a pleasure to concentrate on this relevant aspect uh, about the internationalization of the environment. I saw the key aspects in the university. And let me. Uh, uh, let me speak without mentioning the Academic Writing Center and internalization of science, and I will concentrate on the environment so that all students, without uh, the interference of the color of their part, passport, they feel a part of the student community. What can be done? Um, it does not matter how open our borders are and how we are in a situation of freedom, of movement online and offline. I think that the eyes moved. Uh, the situation has changed. And uh, we and our alumni will be in the situation without, uh, like it will not matter whether they move physically or not, they will still work in the international environment. This aspect is very important. I will not stop on this slide. This is just an illustration of what was said, that internalization is great only if it is a, uh, a natural situation in the university. If we want to uh, describe this, it means that everyone feels this way. Otherwise, we will be in a gap between what was announced and what is reality in the university. Traditionally, we see and we are used to divide internationalization into internal and external. There is an aspect that is related to histories and initiatives, just random events uh, that are um, um, about attraction of students and internal. And the aspect was uh, initially organized with internal interaction. And then we started to think uh, what can be done, uh, just taking into account the idea that movement uh, will uh, be just a part of life, not the majority, because it's quite difficult, but how to make the story integrated into the main part of the education. So I would like to talk about internationalization home, separate university environment, and I think that uh, sometimes it is not uh, always reality. When we talk in theory, everything seems natural, and the life can give good examples and can be opposite. The life is always different from the theory, great picture that we have. And uh, in reality, uh, the story about external and internal, this is just a very conditional format. And from this point of view, this is not what we can touch and which we can show. Uh, it will be this way. Because first of all, it is uh, like different. And we understand that the first course who comes to study at the university, they don't have any idea what they're going to do in the future after four years, because the speed of changes is very quick. And our aim is to not to run uh, before uh, the uh, before the train and to set aims for each 
graduate and I think a part of a community and the aim of the community that will support you in the lifetime and to make you feel how it is to be a part of those like uh, to be one of those who can change the reality. This is the key format. And when we started the theory from the university environment point of view, not just to attract or to announce about the stories, that are just uh, randomly give significant advantages to university in terms of positioning but also to make it constant, constant story, we realized that we have to uh, not discriminate this community inside. Everything that is possible for Russian students should be possible for any students. Uh, it doesn't matter what is the original language or the color of the passport. Of course, this is a compromise. Six years ago, when we discussed about poly language environment of the university, we said that we would like to speak all different languages, but in terms of university, it is really an expensive decision. But at the same time, yes, English is a modern language. And of course, we have to focus on two aspects. In our case, this is Russian and English language. And there is another story that is often forgotten. The language by itself is a mirror. Just this is not the core of what's going on. So it means that everything that is being created inside the environment and creates the processes and creates an environment where the processes are being realized, whether this is a successful publishing international journals, or any event or initiative, or any educational programs for two diplomas and other opportunities for students. It truly really depends on how the university can support these initiatives. And of course, here the opportunity uh, just, uh, is just based on the differences uh, on languages, that is the language of communication, that should not be a barrier uh, to, the, to access those opportunities that the university provides. These, uh, these are partners and services. We can influence services. We can provide standards for services. And we can see how easy we can provide the access from one cultural and academic background to the one that is provided here in the university. So the story was that we wanted to make sure that we agree with this and our opportunities within university are uh, for everyone. It was difficult because we had to choose the point where to start. And one of the key stories of this point was to define the main barriers. And the language barrier is one of those. In terms of the environment, the key thing we will pay attention to now is like the equal access to information because you have to be able in any situation, at least in critical situation, mainly in critical situation, this is not only a story of in your, for your case. These are basic rules and they are the following. So this community follows those rules and they are equal to everyone in spite of uh, the fact that maybe your previous experience can be different. You understand that it can be applied not only to you, but to every student in this university. And of course, there is another aspect. We depend. We depend on the place where we were, we were born and we just lived, um, on geography and cultural background. Moreover, there are some specific features that we work with different legal entities and systems and legislation, and there are some specific things that we have to take into account. These are like these are trustworthy products, and we had to work with expectations how to 
how the story works from inside and how to make it constant. We had to make to be sure that everything that is happening inside policies and procedures is equal to everyone. So it was key for us that all legislative base that is related to our colleagues, to our students, maybe not Russian speaking, maybe not uh, with Russian nationality, uh, whether to our colleagues uh, and workers of the university. This is an equal legislative base that is uh, accessible in Russian and in English. You can always see how our life is organized and everything that university does. There is a point, the finishing point, uh, where a person will feel a part of everything that is going on in university. All events, even if they had online online education, one of the platforms was English speaking, and it allows to our colleagues and students who were not able to enter the university territory last year to feel a part of the university. Can I switch to the next slide, please? And of course, I'm not going to focus on it. Uh, everything is trivial. We saw how students uh, live, and not only students. And uh, uh, the situation is symmetrical both for students and uh, employees. It's very important when the decision is made. Uh, it's very important for us to become the part of it. How uh, do we fit in in uh, the community? We are different and it is a usual thing and from this point of view it is necessary to uh, provide this opportunity to uh, uh, for integrational mechanisms. Uh, we have questions inside. We want to be not only students, we uh, want to become an integral part in uh, students' uh, self-management. Uh, we have to take part and one, one of the most important moments, uh, our current student council conduct uh, meetings uh, with the English uh, translation and uh, uh, what is more, if you speak about students, uh, we discuss the concept of uh, lifelong learning. Uh, we don't have alumni, we have got students. It is a, uh, uh, they uh, are the uh, uh, finished uh, bachelor program and they become our master, uh, master students. And if we are speaking about macro degree, uh, it is a lifelong story. There are some aspects uh, just for the sake of uh, pictures to show you how this uh, story is uh, reflected. Uh, everything is uh, available online 24 uh, 7. Uh, Please give your feedback. Uh, life cycle is reflected here from the in the best uh, traditions, agile approach, um, according to basic key aspects. And uh, then we offered uh, more detailed variants. Uh, you can see faces and understand how this story can be uh, made. Uh, we, are, uh, we can see how the environment looks like. We uh, started from uh, the very simple things. We uh, took pictures uh, of the students' uh, bed desk and now uh, psychological consulting in English in particular is a very important story because it is very uh, difficult um, to be the part of the proce uh, process. What we saw, we were lucky. I like my university very much uh, because everyone is engaged in uh, his own activity, uh, monitoring of student life. It is a key aspect for us 
all monitors are available for foreign students, even those who come here for a short period of time. Um, when we give results with a separate analysis, we see where uh, changes are. Um, what uh, we have to uh, develop uh, in the near future. Uh, on the one hand, we have got satisfied uh, students. Adaptation is highly appreciated by students. Uh, we have uh, good uh, feedback. Uh, from uh, foreign students. We see that we have key aspects. Uh, there is a certain gap uh, which is connected uh, with the Students' Council inside campus. Uh, we lack um, the story, uh, we lack understanding in this respect. We managed to see this situation and the format uh, to tell everything uh, concerning uh, students' accommodation. Uh, from the point of view of migration of students, iVisa, it is a very serious resource, both for students and employees. Uh, now we have got it in testing format. And now are we going to launch a mobile application in order to help uh, students deepen into the uh, systems. And in September, uh, the situation will become easier. One of the key formats is medical uh, support. It is a great concern among uh, students and among us. We are ready to uh, support uh, uh, students in this respect. We are commutators and integrators. We don't want to become the barrier between this service and uh, request, practical request. And the story of uh, inter uh, internal safety network for our foreign students. For us, uh, it is the variant uh, I have already mentioned, how we work uh, inside, how we cooperate inside. There are a lot of key aspects. Uh, there are a few of us, and we don't want to focus on uh, presence hours at work. We have uh, end user, it is our student. We have uh, colleagues in distributed system uh, who uh, provides these uh, processes and everyone understands uh, the uh, story, the logical process, and everything is uh, provided in a 24-7 hour format. So, dear colleagues, don't hesitate to ask questions. Yulia, thank you very much. Dear colleagues, your questions? I have got a lot of questions. Uh, I want to ask a question. The concept is very interesting. Uh, the first point, you mentioned that we don't have any alumni at our university, only students. You mentioned it. At every level of education, uh, uh, additional professional education or so on, uh, 
nevertheless, I know you have got uh, alumni association. It can, it is a peculiar thing. On the one hand, you develop association. On the other hand, I agree with you. Uh, there are no alumni. If you take into account uh, long. Uh, term sustainable education. And where is the balance? Uh, uh, thank you very much for the question. I uh, spoke about the fact that we want to live within this concept. We understand that, of course, uh, we uh, don't uh, go together. Uh, sometimes we part, but it is very important to preserve relationships. Uh, we have got not only alumni association, there is uh, the whole block who work with alumni. We are going to reshift, re re and uh, it is very important for us uh, to be sure that every uh, alumnus of High School of Economics ha has the access to uh, the university at uh, any any time and so the uh, problem of inclusion into the university uh, after gra graduation is very important the uh, opportunity to orient quickly and understand the necessary resource and of course right you are that partly it is uh, a desirable thing everyone has to understand. And uh, we are going to work with every target group separately. Now we understand that potential target uh, student audience is differentiated uh, according to the age and uh, previous experience. And we are going to have the concept of interaction with our alumni, but we want uh, them to uh, preserve uh, connection with us. Thank you very much. I agree with you. And let uh, me know in the future it is not uh, simple to preserve uh, further relationships with the alumni. Uh, one more question. Uh, good afternoon. I am Valentina Arutunan. I am a student. My uh, question is of practical character. I am a student of international business and management. Mm -hmm. I've got international students, uh, colleagues, I deal with them. My question is the following. Uh, in terms of uh, lockdown and uh, closed borders, uh, there are huge problems. Students have the access to resources. They uh, are able to listen to the teacher via Zoom, but the experience of education in High School of Economics is different. It is a community. It is the opportunity to ask questions, communicate, and find colleagues for projects. Uh, what is your opinion? Uh, what uh, should we do? What should students and uh, teachers and administration do in order to improve uh, the ex international experience? Thank you very much for your practical <laughs> question. First, you should be vaccinated. It will be the necessary and first condition and key condition. Uh, the second thing, we work in trans-border uh, space. We are human beings. And uh, my first education is biological one. We understand uh, that we follow the crowd. On the other hand, we are uh, intelligent uh, animals. It, it's not necessary. And in order to get new experience, uh, we should understand what we uh, can uh, do. It is a challenge. Can a, a human being to form and receive new experience in virtual reality. 
Is it a substitute uh, that we have to survive, or uh, whether it is alternative or an opportunity? Uh, we have to understand it. We are in such a concept that uh, everything uh, in our life comes from meetings. Uh, every story uh, must have variants of hybrid interaction. Of course, it is difficult, but it is a necessity. It is difficult to keep in balance and sustain in one focus, retain in one focus. I hope that indeed our state uh, uh, has to elaborate a policy and interact with such challenges as pand pandemic. Uh, they have to elaborate specific mechanisms. But of course, interaction in this uh, trans-border uh, space is more difficult, and online interaction is a challenge. But right now, we don't understand whether it is possible. It is a possible way how to get a new experience without knowing this experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question and for the answer. Yeah, it was very, very good and clear. And after yesterday and the panel about online education, in spite of the fact that the pandemic covered us, uh, we have the experience of people receiving online education and how the networking is being built has a theoretical depth. And these experiences are good. And in mass online universities, I'm not even talking about Coursera, but we have open university in the UK that has been teaching online for a long time. And they definitely have decisions that we have to take and to create the framework. I'm so sorry that I take the time of give work, but I wanted to say that from students' side, they have the request that they have a question, a problem, and from you, from adults, we are expecting the solution. And I think you can help us in this, in this regard, because the students are in the center of this conference to have a project session between the students that are in the situation, and there are a lot of international students who cannot enter the country. We still have the problem in the air. And the micro solutions will help us a lot to not to be in our closed environment, but to use best practices from other universities. So give work. The floor is yours. Here you are. Dear colleagues, good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was really important for me to take part in this discussion right now because in a week or two we will have uh, the first or the second uh, semi-virtual uh, board of directors and uh, international uh, council. And I also wanted to touch the questions of the necessity to introduce some reforms into the administrative structure of the university in terms of, in terms of internationalization and international programs. Uh, my position uh, sounds a little bit strange maybe for some people and for students. Uh, last year, first of all, we started to think about the international programs, what we mean by them and how to enroll people. Uh, we do not mean only the attraction of international students, foreign students of Western Hemisphere. We also can think about uh, CIS, about Russian students. And first of all, we uh, had the situation where you make a leaflet and you have to write something in Russian so that in Russian they understand that they, they study here in St. Petersburg, that they 
will have an international experience. So we put the information that international program, and uh, of course we uh, wrote something, and uh, students and their parents thought that we are advertise the program for international relationships, and we started to think what we mean by international programs. What means international? When we talk about European, it's just like we are uh, in a, uh, like our European university is a small like state. Uh, there are not many students and around 100 teachers and uh, scholars. So we have a very small structure. But at the same time, each faculty and research center is one uh, like a semi-independent county. And before we lived in the palace, we uh, thought it's a good advantage and one of the benefits of the recent crisis of real estate and uh, the fact that our European universities moved from one building into another. And a uh, benefit for me uh, it was when we moved from a palace that was kind of a labyrinth uh, to the building that was a former uh, soldier, uh, soldier uh, building, and it helped us uh, because we found ourselves in a huge corridor together with all other departments because in the palace we had a small corner and we uh, it was very nice we have nice sofas and international students due to cultural and physical barrier they felt uh, as if they were separated uh, from other students now it has changed and uh, I'm it, it's an interesting experience and it was important to think uh, to remove not only physical barriers, but also cultural and language barriers. Of course, then COVID has happened and the situation forced us, first in our history, to enroll not only international students to our programs, because they were not sure whether they uh, would like to study online with us and the uh, the hope that they can come in September disappeared. So we actively started to enroll Russian students in summer. First of all, we need students and we want them physically present. And another idea was that uh, the same uh, problem was with us. So our students cannot go to other countries uh, and uh, those who want to study, uh, before we also had experience uh, of Russian students uh, who studied our programs, and uh, now it became a norm, so we have a lot of Russian students nowadays in the European University, and we have lecture halls, physical presence, and teachers uh, could see those students who happened to be in St. Petersburg and the rest studied online, and those students who stayed in the lecture hall. Uh, in 90% of cases, these were Russian students, but we tried to imagine that we have international students as well, and by today, the interaction and communication with our students of course, we greet uh, in Russian students when we see them outside, but when we have the educational process, all communication is being hold, held in English. And sometimes we think uh, that uh, if we have communication with the Russian student, they might forward this communication to someone else that can speak only English, so we use all the media uh, speaking English. Another specific thing uh, is that we didn't have exchange programs. What we called exchange was mostly just some partnership with American universities that sent students to our university for a semester, and our semester went to their programs for a semester. And the programs that were implemented by our department, they didn't move in this year when they thought that uh, the situation with international mobility is quite bad and it suffered a lot. We managed to start two programs. One of them was a full scape exchange with European universities, for example, UI in Florence. Some students will go there from our university and some intern internship students and uh, students will come to us from September. 
And the second thing is a common program. I don't know even how to call this program. Uh, the program of two diplomas together with the University of Pennsylvania, the University of uh, American Ivy League. And I remember one of slides regarding the differences of international regulatory basis and the differences in an educational system. We faced the program that my colleague, co-director, Professor Kevin, uh, he is acquainted with Russia and with our environment. And it was like for the first time uh, for him, he had a lot of new things and we realized that we spent a lot of time how to make an nice landing and how to correctly introduce and describe our program for students, what they can expect from the program and how they will study in the USA and how they will study here and what kind of diplomas they will get. And the majority of time we spent explaining to each other the vocabulary. What what we mean by uh, the word student, because sometimes the student can mean PhD, and uh, for us uh, we have another word, aspirant, and how we call students uh, who are postgraduate. So we had some misunderstandings in uh, term of vocabulary, and during these. Uh, interactions and discussions, we came up with such an initiative uh, to, to send a new teacher from European University each year to this program so that this teacher has an opportunity to be involved into international life and at the same time to get acquainted with students and be just at least one person for students so that they know in person, not from administrative personnel, together with whom they can come back to Russia and continue a study process. So this personal contact was not only important, but uh, it was natural uh, for our university. As I told, our university is quite small. This is one of the benefits. This is a benefit on the one side, individual uh, personal contact and small groups, and each of us, or we have uh, different roles. For example, I have uh, an administrative role, like a mother for students, and also an, an, I provide entertainment. Sometimes I provide comfort, and sometimes, sometimes I'm just a teacher for those students. And when I was listening to you, Yulia, and seeing all this infrastructure, I envy you in a good sense. I want also to have all this. And we understand that maybe this is not possible in such a small structure that our university has. Because it's not uh, always like it's not the number of students which is the most important thing, but also the number of tasks for the personnel, the scope of tasks that should be included into the internalization, and we need people for those tasks. And to be able to implement this, I think uh, we do not have enough administrative uh, employees, and if we hire all the employees, uh, probably there will be more administrative employees than students. If you noticed uh, on our website, we have only three employees. The most difficult thing is to agree inside. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, this is one of the most interesting aspects and important aspects. I manage the program of the administrative uh, development of employees. This is not just directly connected with internationalization and English language, but all colleagues that want to change the environment inside the university, they have understanding that these type of students are also ours, and we have to cope with their demands. It's a very important project. It's quite a big, uh, a big uh, change uh, when the tail starts to wave the dog, and this is uh, another story. Thank you very much for your comment, Yulia. And the last thing I'd like to mention is to come back uh, to this uh, internationalization. What's really important for it is the attempt 
uh, the, the temp, probably we will not be able to realize it on 100%, but at least to remove a little bit uh, and uh, to use best practices to provide it to the maximum number of students. Of course, we do our best and put a lot of efforts. And sometimes we have to be really creative to correlate with the requirements or uh, the standards and at the same time to provide the internal flexibility in the university to provide the access to our Russian students and English-speaking European students who will be able to attend our international programs. Everything that makes our progress international is that um, the education is given in English. This is what it makes them international. And also we advertise it for external audience and they cost a lot. And for us in students, it is quite expensive. It could be uh, a little bit costly for us in students, but uh, we can give them a way to, uh, to continue uh, and to come to our students. They can enroll into ordinary programs and then to move to attend our lectures uh, on these international programs. And of course, I hope that the second year of, uh, of our education uh, students will be able to come. Of course, we ask them online how, what experience they have of uh, studying with us online. But of course, they miss a lot. Next week, for example, we are planning to gather together and to celebrate the end of the semester and how to do that people who study online to feel also involved in this, uh, in this event. Event. I don't want to make it darling event, another darling boarding event in Zoom. We try to just celebrate and maybe to drink some wine or something tasty. I'm sorry that, and I ask them whether it is comfortable for them that they see that we are all together here and they just watch us online. So we want to be connected with them and make them feel in September that they come to the community that is known. Thank you very much. Uh, well, there is a special technical system concerning microphones. Uh, your questions? Good afternoon. I'm Dara Mikhailovna, Northwest Institute of Management of uh, uh, the Presidential Academy. And in the international European environment, uh, in uh, Europe, there are a lot of uh, research centers, academic, scientific events that are conducted both for uh, external interesting people. To what extent uh, do these uh, international, uh, do these students uh, of international programs uh, to what extent are they involved into this project activity and how does uh, this help uh, the in in internationalization? Uh, this, is mu uh, this is a mutual uh, project and the practice of involvement into important affairs and what is the outcome? In fact, it is institutionalization of uh, foreign students' involvement into the activity of um, centers. There are uh, no such situation. One more specificity. Uh, we considered, we considered uh, this advantage. The countries from which uh, students come to us, Americans, uh, no, uh, Northern and uh, Western Europe, and uh, today we have the list of 25 countries. Uh, uh, air connection was restored with this country, but unfortunately Finland, jo Germany, uh, Finland, Germany, of course, among this list. Uh, there are students from post-Soviet countries. They understand uh, Russian. 
uh, and we so, uh, very often we don't uh, consider them foreign students, uh, but uh, they are actively involved in the work of our center. English-speaking students, of course, uh, we uh, receive one of the centers uh, is closely connected with our um, uh, master's program on uh, energy policy in Eurasia. Uh, th this is the name of the pro uh, program, and uh, the other center with the similar, uh, the same name. It uh, researches international policy and active interaction. We actively interact with student uh, journal. Uh, it is. It is one of the outposts of the of uh, our center, and. Uh, uh, students are actively involved in this uh, pro process and recent uh, alumni who want to keep in touch with the uh, university. We try to uh, arrange uh, internships. I like the idea to send our uh, students to one of our research centers to receive practice. Uh, it is very easy just to change the building. Uh, we have uh, such cases. Students uh, have uh, practices uh, in such centers. But we want uh, institutionalization, internalization to send students uh, somewhere, somewhere else. Thank you very much. I can't see any more questions. Dmitry, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. First of all, I prepared a lot. Um, I prepared a report in a ten, on 10 pages, but I'll try to combine my ideas. Uh, the order of uh, speeches is very logical, and I am very pleased that uh, I'm the last speaker. Uh, of course, I would like to live in your wonderful world. Uh, we, are, we have been uh, building it for nearly 14 years. We have some uh, drafts. Not everyone understands the difference between international cooperation and e internationalization. International cooperation is very well developed, but inter uh, internationalization is not. International uh, cooperation, uh, it's like uh, putting a plaster on the hand. Um, uh, you see, it uh, resistance uh, develops. A certain level should be achieved. If we uh, re uh, return 20, 25 years back, I have been working uh, in this uh, sphere for 18 years, and uh, many years ago, Uh, university was uh, separated from the process. Uh, for example, there were requests, uh, for example, for marketing specialists. Uh, uh, for example, we had uh, such a Spanish uh, Mariah, for example, and they asked, uh, are there any other such specialists? Of course, we had, and uh, there was a development. We received more and more such specialists in the international s sphere. It, it is a sort of a game, but in internationalization is a different thing. And so the background of everything is student exchange. Students uh, percept everything better, easier. Uh, they went abroad uh, for trading. They receive academic experience, life experience, international experience. This everyday uh, life experience. Uh, for example, when students return, uh, they uh, complain that uh, uh, we don't have a dressing room and give examples, international examples. For example, in Germany, uh, there are a lot of dressing rooms and so on. I am in Poland. 
everything is closed uh, uh, in connection with lockdown. But I'm not agree. I don't agree uh, with him because he has the opportunity to uh, deepen himself into international life. Uh, there is a process of enrichment. Then uh, uh, there is a request from international students to deepen in uh, the environment. Uh, do Russian stu uh, uh, as, uh, Russian students ready to deepen themselves into international environment? Uh, for example, let's take the example. Uh, some uh, team. It is uh, difficult to sometimes to communicate with foreign students in terms of language communication and so on. Uh, for example, uh, students decided to uh, create student uh, council, but they are going to uh, accept uh, Belarusians, uh, Kazakhs. Uh, they are not going to uh, invite Vietnamese, Chinese, because they uh, are not good at studies. Uh, they don't know Russian language. But I think I am focused on China. There are, uh, you know, that students are, are divided uh, into uh, Baltic states, uh, countries, students, uh, former Soviet Republic students, and uh, the other part of students, for example, Chinese students, 700 Chinese students at uh, the university uh, is a good thing. Uh, first of all, psychological age. Uh, Chinese students, Chinese guys, uh, their age uh, uh, of, uh, they are not uh, so mature as our students. They lay uh, four or five years lag behind our students in their development. And uh, the communication with them should be different. Plus, psychologically, uh, Chinese uh, students are made uh, to achieve success anyway, but uh, not always they can achieve this uh, success. And uh, sometimes they are at a loss in such random system of education. And uh, I, fu I fully agree uh, with the fair, uh, role of administration. Uh, the rules for everyone are the same, both for uh, Russian and foreign students. Uh, Russian students should understand that uh, they are in the same conditions. Uh, they will be exempted from the university if uh, they are not uh, doing well at st uh, uh, in studies. There are questions of communication. Uh, Chinese students uh, uh, have only WeChat, no uh, other social networks, and they have, uh, they know three languages, Chinese, Russian, and English. And uh, Chinese language today is very popular. And even uh, some office workers know, uh, know Chinese. So what uh, we invented the following thing: we created a Russian Chinese club uh, in 2011. It is self-education of uh, Chinese students and students uh, uh, on uh, Chinese programs. Uh, their aim is. Uh, this admission of the university, they uh, ed uh, self educate, uh, they educate themselves and develop uh, themselves. Uh, there are interesting results. For example, uh, students collected Chinese veterans in uh, China. They uh, 
uh, marched along the streets with red banner, and they opened uh, the uh, topic uh, that uh, the right Chinese ve vet veterans and as well. For example, uh, guys uh, publish uh, journal, uh, Business uh, Bridge. It is uh, devoted to business from the point, uh, student's point of view. A business in Russia, business in China. Uh, this uh, uh, journal is connected with a Chinese business center. Uh, it uh, was located in Lenexpo uh, before. Uh, Russian Chinese companies and university, they together uh, try to organize uh, students. Chinese students uh, study differently. We have uh, specific projects. They were implemented on uh, teachers stimulating uh, to offer them additional classes, additional uh, learning. Uh, Chinese, it is not advisable to include Chinese students into group projects. It is uh, better to work with them individually. Uh, we give, uh, there is a project. The Academy of uh, Social Sciences of China. It is the uh, library of young Lenin uh, on all basic disciplines. Uh, there are small books, the collection of small books, and uh, these books contains the main terms on this or that discipline. Subjects, uh, we are, and we are sure that uh, the student understands uh, the essence. All these books are published uh, together with uh, partnering uh, universities. Last year, we opened the club Professional Dialogue. It is the next step. It is the attempt to attract uh, not only students, but uh, also professional communities to study Russian. Uh, Russian language should be developed. It is on uh, complete, it is total uh, online uh, story, uh, different specialization, uh, explanation, and understanding of Lexis. Uh, it is aimed at attraction of Chinese business. In order to allow uh, Chinese students uh, and so on, uh, find uh, further practices. We have space. It is called Chinese uh, uh, Library or Chinese Pavilion. In 2013, uh, State Council of China presented us uh, different sources in uh, uh, Chinese, Russian, and uh, English, uh, three uh, halls of library, uh, they are available for everyone. Uh, materials are available uh, online uh, in uh, the electronic form and in paper version. We also have the licenses to teach uh, Chinese uh, state employees, state organization employees, but all these uh, pieces remind a game, you know, like we have such a game when you have to put animals until they fall down. Uh, so if something lacks, we can just cut a crocodile and put it in the top. So we have a pyramid, and if you cut uh, an animal like a elephant, it can break the pyramid. So we teach uh, Chinese state in place and of course last year we did not teach anyone but annually we teach hundreds several hundreds of students they meet our students and this is how the province has to be responsible for the students whom they separated because you know that uh, 
to all universities, uh, to all universities that are not American, that are not British, students uh, who come to us, they were just rejected by their own universities, and we have to uh, to take them, to sort them out, and uh, of course we have our alumni who we have, of course we also have them. We have alumni and guys that are successful, uh, just were employed successfully. Uh, we have one guy who is a director for CIS countries. They uh, created fast track for alumni of our university. So it is easier for them to be employed there. So the situation is like a cycle, a cycle system that is on the one hand is not a getter, uh, not like uh, every Chinese come there and will be taught in Chinese, but this is like a China-friendly environment, kind of forced China-friendly environment, but every year it's getting better and better. This is not everything I wanted to tell, but close to that. Also, I want to talk about healthcare. I saw healthcare as a topic. Talking about the insurance, we have great insurance program. But there is a difference between students from CIS countries and Eastern students. Eastern students do not use our medicine. They do not trust us. If a student has a problem, they take uh, a flight and go to China and uh, uh, have uh, health services there. So the question, why do they need to pay for insurance here, for medical insurance here, uh, if they don't use it? Of course, uh, there are some requirements, visa requirements, so we have a package, uh, a package for a student, for a Chinese student. Uh, we have a coverage in case of uh, emergency situation of death so that the um, it is covered uh, and uh, other students for example Russian students and CIA students they take this advantage of the insurance and they use it all the time so there are specific things that we have to take into account thank you very much please ask the questions I'm Shipilov, uh, Irina, High School of Economics. I have a very short question. Dmitry, you described the whole system of work, uh, of adaptation uh, of Ch for Chinese students. And there are a lot of students that are, uh, that face more and more with Chinese students. What is the most effective way just to have a person who is the head of department who speaks Chinese or maybe a network of intercultural events for teachers? Um, so how you tell you have a lot of measures for adaptation, what should you pay attention to? Uh, if I pivot your question, I have the same question with Russian students. They ask why Chinese students don't speak Russian. And my answer is like I always give an example. We had a guy that Chinese like leaders a lot. They appoint a leader. It's very important if you have a group over 10 people any group of Chinese over 10 people, you have to have a leader that will lead this group. Uh, Chinese like to lead and they like to uh, listen to leaders and it's easier to work with groups uh, of 10 people than to work with each student separately. This is the first thing. Another thing that they react on the environment and they go without uh, just uh, barriers. If the environment says that if you are silent, you will get a uh, satisfactory mark and you will go further, of course, they will keep being silent. And in the best case, they say, oh, I don't understand, I can't. We had a guy that was the president of the Russian Chinese club, the postgraduate student, bright Russian language. Uh, everything was great. If he had a problem, any problem, he came to me and said, oh, I don't understand. So I said, I know that you speak Russian. He says, oh, I did not pay for dormitory for a year. I thought it is free of charge. 
And I said, okay, uh, we agreed uh, how he will uh, say this. And he says, he comes again and says, oh, I don't get a visa. And I ask, why? Why? What's the problem? Uh, he said, oh, I bought insurance just uh, on the black market uh, because it was like uh, he needs insurance for formal, for formality, for visa, and he just saved money. But of course, when the environment does not pay attention and they are eager to cope with such students who keep silence for over three years. And whose fault is it? This is the environment. The environment should dictate. I always tell, I believe from the financial point of view, the additional education is much more important than to keep the student through all these three courses. So immediately when I get uh, the signal, I will uh, put the student to, like make the student repeat the education. So it's much more beneficial for the university. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have much time. One more question, please, Irina. Uh, please, I would like to ask Yulia uh, to continue the discussion that Georg started. I think it's very important. Here on conference, I hope that uh, representatives of many regional universities listen to our discussion. Those who are not really large and who see, think that when we think and we listen about the high school of economics that it's great, uh, it's uh, huge and a good organization and a bright picture that is not possible to reach. But what if it is possible to reach? What can small universities do, first of all, what to concentrate on, because we talk today about internationalization of the environment, and I think it will be more uh, really important to answer this question. Thank you very much for the question. There is no uh, answer. The question is really controversial. It really depends on the aims that a university has. Uh, the things that will work if you work with 700 Chinese uh, will not work if you have students from Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan. If you have a focus, it's great. You can build the demand uh, based on this focus. And we had the situation that we didn't have the focus. However, we were not going to reinvent the wheel. What we had to rethink and to do, I'll try. I will tell you, for example, we have visa support, and it works in 90% of cases. And you do not have to just uh, spend a lot of time. You do not need to read texts and to make sure that they uh, work with students. Like the whole world does that. Some companies just uh, fight, struggle with walls. This is just because they had to do this. They had no other opportunities. But there are companies that develop successfully, because you need to rethink best practices and to take what works in your cases. This is a great skill, and you can use it. This is a very good skill. We've done the same when we analyzed the international practices. To take and input, uh, it's not always it does not always work, but the university uh, is great because it can rethink and to form the situation uh, based on the tasks they have. It's a great skill to learn from each other. I had a personal, very uh, painful experience with students from Japan. I have a diploma of intercultural intercultural communication, when you talk to students, when they nod and smile, and after some time you understand that no one, no one uh, understood anything uh, because there is a format of some communication, formal communication, and you take it as a pure coin. This is not the question whose fault it is. This is just about a different situation. So for me, it was really interesting. Uh, I asked how to deal with this, how a teacher deals with uh, this multicultural environment. And they said, wait when we have critical mass, we will set this task and we will solve this. I was nervous and anxious a little bit until I saw how the university solves this 
problem. This is what we base in our life, uh, based on in our life. Uh, we remember our painful experience and we are implement uh, the uh, results that we have uh, taken from it. So this is key. Uh, if key group of people that leads the university, they do not have this understanding that are responsible for different aspects, I think this can be a failure. And if these people have uh, who, are, who participate in different areas in, in science and education, if they understand that they can develop this story in a good way, because every university will have their own problems. But at the same time, when we talk about internationalization, that you always uh, remember how you are called. And besides that, this is not a goal, this is just a tool. And from this point of view, we have to agree that this is just a unified tool for all of us. Otherwise, it will not be effective. Thank you. I'll try to add, from my point of view, to be small, it's an advantage. If you don't have a risk to be eaten, the smaller you are, the better, because when you implement best practices, it has much less scale and costs much less. And of course, you always can assess whether you need it or not. And our university is the result of uh, compliance of three universities. We have two different models in FINEC, in Financial University. We had one model that was built successfully. In another university, they had everything like in a kindergarten, everything but smaller, 100 times smaller. And in the third university, they have everything differently. And one employee stayed only because the system was not uh, was not possible in isolation. So when a small university entered to our to our system, they were just uh, introduced successfully and they grew significantly over 10 years because they could grow in a high quality. Like in a kindergarten, if you have 11 students, you can come to each of them and help them, support them each. So the service will be student-oriented, more student-oriented then you have 1,000 and half students. You cannot uh, provide personal support to each student out of 1,500. So you cannot make sure that everyone has a specific uh, hotel. You cannot just work with each student. So you cannot have internalization in the university. This is just a natural process. Either you are pushed into internationalization or you just develop the network, it is great. Nothing bad uh, if you are not international, internationalized, maybe you can just be international. We had a branch in Anadir. Why do they need internationalization in Anadir? I don't know. Thank you very much. I think we all uh, realized during the discussion that we are in, in different stages of maturity of internationalization. We have different aims, but we are eager to share best practices. And if eight years ago we take this time frame that Yulia said, for us it was a barrier and uh, we this talked as a barrier that we have to overcome. And now we still see it as a problem, this diversity, these differences, but at the same time we collected a lot of decisions and this is not a problem, this is just an operational task. And each university, here we have four university, Timothy is with us as well, so we have four different universities, four different models and approaches, but in general, Inside the country, we have collected a lot of decisions. Uh, so we can collect all decisions into the box. So for small, middle, remote uh, universities can also find the decision according to their size 
and scale. And if we gather together within eight years, and I hope we will not, uh, we will not give up this tradition. So we will continue holding these confer conferences, and we will talk about diversity as a resource, not as a barrier. Thank you very much to all speakers. Thank you for activity in the lecture hall. Yes, thank you very much.